All right, so John is going to do a talk on uh, Provision 4.x, a developer sneak peek. Um, uh, John is uh, the man, the myth, the legend, and that is his intro. No. Um, John Pugh is an independent Drupal consultant and code artist. It's kind of like a sandwich artist from Subway. Is that where that That's good. I like that. <laughs> his company, ThinkDrop, is focused on business app design, DevOps support, and content strategy in New York City. He is an uh, Ager maintainer, uh, for those of you who don't know. John can tell you all about Ager. Um, uh, and he created DevShop, an open source Drupal development platform. Um, he can tell you all about that too. Um, I'm going to stall real quick while John gets his computer all set up. Um, so this building was built in 1930. Okay. All right. You good? Yes. All right. John, everybody. John Pugh. Wow. Thanks for coming out. It's really cold. This is a big crowd. I wasn't expecting less than any people. Uh, okay, this is gonna be, this is, you know, this isn't really building Drupal, but it's important stuff, so, long story. Huh? I'll get closer to the mic so I don't have to yell. Thanks, Mark. Uh, like he said, this is me. Um, I'm not gonna go with that again. Uh, <laughs> the point of this thing and the point of all the things that I work on are just try to make things simpler. It's very, very hard uh, to launch websites if you, even if you know how to do it, it's still a pain. You know, you may have your scripts ready, but. There's plenty of documentation on how to do it, though. You can go to Drupal.org and find out right away and learn really quickly how easy it is to get Drupal up and running. There's only these four steps, and then if that one's too long, you can read the quick install, which is really short. Um, you can spend, you know, <laughs> it's easy stuff. Like, you just, come on. Everybody should know this stuff. and. No, we want to know how to click and build a website and forget about all this DevOps stuff, right? So, um, like I said, the problem is running websites on your own computer is, is too hard. Uh, no matter what provisioner you use, you still have to manage your own metadata. That's a technical statement, right? But provisioner means like Ansible or Chef or Puppet or any of these things your DevOps people and systems people tell you that they use to provision their servers, like they're still storing somewhere. What Git repo am I pulling from? Where should I, those files go? All that stuff. So they still have to manage that somehow. Um, and most of these provisioning tools are written in a languages other than PHP, which is okay, but there's way too many ways to run Drupal. You can tell from my very scientific graph that I created here. Uh, but it's true. Go look up how many things that, ways there are to, to launch Drupal. <laughs> uh, so in 2007, this started out as a his historic talk, right? I said, oh, 10 years of hosting Drupal because this Ager thing just hit 10 years of commits. No one really knows when it started, but the first actual recorded commit was on December 7, 2007. And, the, you know, some people were like, man, we want to be able to host Drupal really easy because this Drupal thing is amazing. Even 10 years ago, it was really impressive. Um, and they were like, what if we could use Drupal to build, to manage our Drupal sites? And, and they did it. And they created this company called Bright, um, which you can only find on the archive if you know the domain. And I look for it, so I did. Um, but they were really like the earliest kind of Drupal as a SaaS, like hosting service, trying to automate things. And, you know, who knows what happened. One thing led to another. They were acquired and transferred to other people. But the point is the co source code for that platform they built came open source. Just like Drupal became open source and everyone started using it, this thing is just Drupal modules and they open source that so that we could click and say add a site, type in the domain name, and it runs all the scripts in the back end needed to actually turn the site on. Um, this is the UI, and it's been the UI since about 2007. Um, Postmaster is a component of that. It's a Drupal distribution. So all of that stuff is Drupal code that you saw. It's and Drupal nodes and fields and templates and all of those things. So it's really familiar to you, and you can add modules to it to do all the extra things that Drupal can do. Um, hosting is the name of the modules in itself, and provision is the name of these Drush commands that run on the back end. You may not know what Drush is, so that's a shell tool for Drupal. It's a Drupal shell. And you can type in Drush cache clear, for example, and you don't have to click through all the pages to hit the button. You just type in Drush cache clear. It does all the things. So they extended that to make commands like provision verify and provision install so that it would actually spin up all the configuration needed to run your site. Apache configs and database configs and created database automatically, set all the files, everything in that instructions list. Agerge does automatically for you every time. Um, a little bit of history graph, so the commits do go back that far. Um, it's intense sometimes <laughs> to dig in there. Most of mine are like all at the end. You can see the little spike here because I'm doing crazy on this new project. Um, 
this is the original commit. Not terribly interesting, it was, but it was only 11 files and uh, 1,300 lines. Um, this is the provision ink file as it stands today. So uh, git blame on GitHub is a really handy tool. If anybody has an old project, very useful to find that blame button and you can figure out line by line who did what. Um, and so you can see 10 years ago, <laughs> six years ago, 10 years ago, really, really uh, legacy stuff. Um, and that's how it worked in 2007. Um, put all these things together and they were able to build a Drupal hosting company and also release it open source. So in 2018, what are we gonna do? Same, we do the same thing right now, basically. <laughs> it's basically the same packages. It's Drupal 7 front end. It's a Drush package. It's Drupal modules. It's, it's, it's really pretty, it's getting old and showing its age. I'm not gonna go through every detail, but like it's got a long and storied history. The community survived somehow. Um, throughout all these things, it's older than Drupal 6. Um, so we're, we're, we are still doing things with it, right? So what's next is that the system needs an overhaul. Uh, there, clearly there's a lot of smart people involved and they have many different ideas on how it should go or what it should, what it should do. So the team talked together and figured out that if we break it up into seg segments, we can kind of tackle things. Helmo, uh, Herman Van Rink is kind of in the current branch maintainer. So he puts out the releases of Agar 3, which is stable right now for hosting tons of Drupal sites. NASA has like 500 Drupal sites running on this. Um, I took over what, I'm, what we're calling the 4.x, um, which is what I'm working on now, we're gonna show. And then uh, Christopher Gervais is working on a totally brand new next generation thing that has no, no common upstream at all to uh, Agar that we're calling 5.x. And so we broke it up like this so we can keep developing the stable version, work on kind of the current gen, next gen thing on the Agar 4, and then Chris is looking at the long term with 5. So. Yeah, it might be, it is a little confusing, but we're, this is all work in progress and we're making it, trying to get through it as quick as possible. So yeah, like I said, um, <clears throat> Agar 4 may or may not be a thing. I'm working on provision 4. I, I care most right now about the back end, this command line interface, which isn't just for hosting on your cloud servers, but this should be easy enough to run on your, on your Mac laptop. So you can, I'm trying to make this thing easy enough so you're brand new to Drupal, a designer, whatever, you don't know how to program, you can just call these little commands and it'll spin up your Drupal site on any computer. Once that's stable and works, there's a lot of features that the main Agar thing uses because it's a huge multi-site hosting machine, then we can kind of think about bringing it, bringing the Agar front end into 4.x fully. Um, if we do get there, I'm gonna bring in all these extra tools that we built with like DevShop and this CI stuff and Drupal that we brought all into the, bring it all into the native code base. Again, details don't really matter, but um, this is way down the road. You know, I'm working on, focusing on, on the, um, on the back end CLI first. Um, but hopefully, I, I have a little running website Drupal on my Mac right now. So in terms of working MVP of turning a Drupal site on, on your laptop, this is gonna be something I put out as like an alpha in the next few months. Um, like I explained before with five, it's a totally new, new rewrite that he's doing. I'm not involved in that 5.x, but you can check it out. But you really have to know a lot about it because it's, I'm, I haven't even run it yet, so that's intense stuff. But with 4.x, we're gonna back it up a bit. In September, Drush announced they're not gonna support things the way they used to support them. I'm not gonna get into the details, but basically, the command line thing is like becoming a module. You wanna put it right in there with your site, so it's not this external thing. So we realized, the team realized, okay, we got it. It's finally due time for a total rewrite. It's been a long time coming. Um, I've personally built a lot of Symphony console apps. There's a lot of other people that have built Symphony console apps. Everything here from Composer and all these things that once you're in Drupal long enough you hear about are all built on the same components. They're all on the on underlying, they're all Symphony, which is what Drupal 8's powered by. Um, so there's a million examples of how to build a really powerful CLI tool that's really easy to use. Um, so basically I've been dreaming of doing this for a long time and the opportunity arose so I'm finally like sitting down and coding it. Um, all the details, we're gonna store the stuff in YAML files. Um, once we get the commands working well enough, we can put it in there with the, the front end hosting system. But primarily, I needed it to be simple and easy to use and complete and do, do everything for you. Like the Drush commands were not easy to use at all. You need to know everything ahead of time. Basically, no one used the back end command line for Agar. I, I, I would wager. They said it was, it was there so you could use it, but no one actually did because it just was not easy to use. So. How do we make it easy to use? Clean and simple console makes it things colorful, concise, not cluttered. Um, you just type in provision and you see the list of things that you're able to do. Um, 
as so it works with context. You save like the site that represents this, the platform represents the site you're working on. When you type in save, it, it's, if you don't specify up front, it asks you for each question and generates the defaults if possible. Like I'm in this folder, so if I just I can just hit enter and it'll use that folder for the path to my Drupal site. So I'm trying to minimize the keystrokes that everyone has to make. Um, more, we're going to do a live a live type through thing here, but. Like every, like every down, distilling complex things down to as simple as possible when you're using it right in the terminal, right? So writing the web config, creating a database, something fails, it just throws an X. We're not gonna like spit out everything unless you ask for it um, being verbose. This is what a successful verify looks like. So like all those instructions, right? Create your database and your Apache and all that. We're just running them as tasks and it interactively shows the task, checks it if it runs successfully, puts an X if it fails. Um, this thing has to be easy to develop. Baker was really hard to contribute to. Um, uh, you know, like I'm just this is just background, but um, that's the way it works. Is it, you st you're storing things like your server. It represents your local computer. You know, it knows it has Apache in the database. The site is URLs. You can put as many sites on that server and platform as you can. The platform represents the uh, code base. All this stuff is now st stored in these little simple YAML files. We don't. You don't write these. Like when it's asking you those questions, you're answering them and it writes it for you automatically. But you can go in there and read it and see, okay, that's what, how my thing is configured. Um, properties like root, that's where are my Drupal files located. The make file is like the thing that is used to build your site with all the modules in it. Um, a git URL is like where it's gonna clone from. So if you put git URL in there and you verify this platform, it'll automatically clone it into that root. Right, so you don't have to do any of these manual steps. Um, in terms of programming, interactively, it's like it tells you this. This is this is the the green uh, down here is what you see. This is the default. If you hit enter, that's stored, and it's basically I was able to because it's Symfony and all these things that I'm learning about like chain methods. I can just create this very simple. Okay, the, a platform has a root. Uh, the, the description is this. The default value is the current folder you're in. Uh, whether or not it's required, and then a special function to like validate that. Again, I'm going over the heads of a lot of people because this is not Drupal stuff, but all you developers out there, this is how easy this is going to be. <laughs> I'm, you know I'm talking to you. Look how simple this stuff is. This is the property for git URL. When you, I'll do it in real time, but when you type in a git URL, it then runs the validate hook, which says, can I access that git URL, and tells you, no, you cannot access. Are you sure that's the right one? You know, and so it's like you, you you are able to get this like hand holding through, and it's really a lot of fun. Um, but clean in terms of programming, right? So you can walk through. It's like if it's empty, don't do anything. Uh, tell the user what I'm doing. I'm checking the Git remote because if it just hangs, then the user has no idea what you're doing. Um, this is a task exec. Just means run this command. Git ls remote just pings the Git URL. Um, this basically is just building a command that runs on the command line. If it was success, not successful, then show this message. If it was successful, then just show that message and that's it. So if you're building DevOps tools, this is really handy stuff. Uh, services, they represent like a w the, your web server. We're aware of your web server, what type it is, what we need to do to restart it, what the config file needs to look like, the database, all that stuff. The way this whole thing works is through a thing called verify. You run, you insert a server and you say verify server and the code goes, what am I supposed to do? And it looks up all these tasks and it says, okay, I need to write a file, I need to change the permissions of this folder, all the stupid stuff that we don't care about and a robot can do better, it will do for you. And that's how Agar works now. But it's in like all these Drush execs and shell execs and it's just this big mess of Drush and functions and it's extremely confusing. Now we have these tasks, they're little tasks. And it's like just a list. Um, and when you saw that checkbox, that's where it's getting these strings. So it says start, and then it prints that message, and then it runs the command, and then it just prints done. It just prints done at the end of the timestamp, or you can set a failure message or all this other stuff. Um, and that's basically, this is like 99% of DevOps is like write a file, run a command. <laughs> and so whether it's you're launching Kubernetes with this thing or just run, running Apache, it's like write a file with some data in it and run a command, and you get, you get a website or whatever service you're running. Um, so yeah, 
basically every service, you have a class that just says like database service and you have these methods for verify site, platform, and server and so you do things when someone calls verify site or verify server and it can be anything. Um, like I showed the git clone one earlier. Um, this is the Docker build one. So this is a D Docker web service that will actually build the container for you automatically. Um, and because it's using, th this is all robo stuff, which I'll get into in a minute, but it like fails gracefully and throws beautiful exceptions and color and it's awesome stuff. And it hides all of that. See this silent here? Uh, robo task, Docker build, right? What directory, this is all robo stuff. What tag is it going to run in? Uh, you know, what file it's going to use? Uh, options, but the silent part here is universal for robo tasks, which will then, awesome. Uh, yeah, so if it's not robust, it just hides it. So if you t t dash V, it prints out everything. I got five minutes. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Leverage others, robo, again. Everything in terms of DevOps is built in, it's like, uh, uh, what is it, Gulp or Grunt or whatever the task runner is, this is a whole new thing. Drush builds, builds on robo. All these other tools are using robo for all sorts of different things. Um, it's got everything in it we could possibly need for moving files and doing ops type work. So we're not re writing execs and running shell scripts all the time. We're just leveraging these kind of elegant object oriented things to do stuff. Um, we're using it as a framework. It can be put into a FAR file. This is all built by this consolidation team, which is like Drush core maintainers got together and they're like, all this stuff we wrote for Drush is useful for other things. So like their libraries are used by WordPress CLI and all these other different tools. Um, so this, this is the PHP renaissance we're all talking about, right? So these all use Robo specifically, like Aqu Acquia BLT and all these other tools. Um, once this thing works, we can include it in Drupal 8 itself and just use the interaction to generate a form instead. Um, let's do something. Terminal is annoying, right? But we're going to make it easier. So pr pro is my shortcut for provision. I type pro, it tells you all the commands. If I type pro status, it tells me just my config, but I have no context yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and start making things. Pro save, it tells me, oh, context. You could put all of these things in the command line automatically too. So when you're, if you're using it for DevOps, you can just write a single line to save your context all at once. Give it a name, I tell it what type. Oh, I want server. These autocomplete things are awesome. I can just hit one letter or I can hit up and down and it scrolls through. So it's super easy to use. Um, defaults are built in, so I'm just like hitting enter. Localhost is fine. Script user is automatically detected because the property is like automatically looking up the currently running user. Automatically looking up my home directory. This stuff is all just going to be, you don't even know, you're going to need to know, not even going to need to know what it is. Um, I hit enter to, to save that config. I want to add a service. Yes, I do. That server has a database. MySQL. Uh, this is one part I have not automated yet. Libraries. Got another one. HTTP. We're gonna, it's basically, again, universal. So there's going to be libraries for like whatever type of system you happen to be running it on. Um, this one dem for demo is running Apache. Detects the web group automatically, whether it's WData or one of these other ones. This is going to set up local Mac OS built in Apache. There's no Docker or VM that's going to happen here. Um, it saves your restart command. That's how it can write, the, write it and restart it. And no, I don't want to add another server in there yet. Okay, so now that I have the context, server master, see it saved everything I put into those inputs. Now I can verify the server will tell me if I actually do have a web server there. Um, I actually put a sleep in there for one second. So you can see the to-do and then it runs because it goes too fast sometimes. <laughs> but I'm gonna, if it's interactive, I'm going to make it an option. But uh, if I do dash v for verbose, get a lot more. So it's like checking that, checking to see if I can create the database, seeing all these things. This is just a server. I haven't added the platform yet or anything like that. Um, so this is just making sure, okay, I can see a database. I have root access. I can create privileges. This is all in the, the goal of this is to create these databases automatically. Right? Uh, so now I need to add a platform. Mm -hmm. Demo here. Wait, yeah. Let's go into 
this folder. So I already downloaded uh, Atrium. So I can save a new platform. Atrium. It's a platform. It's saying my root. I'm on yes and hit enter. Don't care about the make file. Don't care about any of this stuff. I'm just hitting enter. Hit enter again to write it. It saved it to the YAML file. Uh, I want to. It needs a web server, so it's list now. It lists the server I just added because it knows that server is providing a web service to me. So I can say, "Yep, I want server master," and that's it. So now I can do, do a verify on the platform. Let's see. So it just does a little Apache config. Um, platforms don't do much, so let's add another platform because it's fun to do this. That's the root is where I want my Drupal files to go. I'm going to use a Git URL this time. So like if this was your Pantheon or whatever, put it in here. It checks. It says, is it really there? Is it really there? Connected. Uh, do I want to save that? Yes. I want to specify the web server. And now when I call verify on this platform, for the, when it does it the first time, it'll actually clone it for me. Tells you it's creating the folder, cloning the repo to there. If I hit dash V, you would see the output of the git clone and all the downloading. Uh, so now we have two platforms. All right. Uh, now it's at a site. Not the fun part. Let's see. <laughs> Make an alias. New. So each site, one, a site goes onto only one platform. So the site I'm creating, I'll be like, do I want it to be in Atrium? Yeah. Or do I want it to be on the other platforms? I just hit, hit yes. Um, and then I got to give it a domain. Uh, I already have this URL. Dot, local dot computer is my domain. All, it all redirects to 127 localhost. Feel free to use it. Um, I don't care about the profile. Atrium or Agar installs automatically, so it tracks what install profile you want to use so it can fully automate. So it'll actually run the install profile and have everything done for you. So now it's saying, okay, it's a site. Uh, the site requires a database service. So which server would you like to use to fill your database? I hit server master. Um, this will be automatically generated, but it's not right now. So I'm just going to type it in so we can do it later. But it saves that data to the contacts. You can see it uh, here. All right, so all the different metadata what users and names it needs. And now I want to verify the site. And this should create the database, create the virtual host file. <laughs> so a couple things were mocked in there. But what Agar does is actually writes your settings.php file so it's already ready to go. It's already configured. Um, but I should be able to, now that this properly works, to load that URL. <laughs> I don't remember that for a while. That was a good debugging demo, actually. No, no, not debugging. I mean, uh, we're going to check our metadata back ends here. <laughs> So everything, huh? Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> site.local.computer is just a context name. It means nothing. The URI is what matters. So local.computer is always resolving to localhost, no matter what. Anything under local computer resolves to localhost. <laughs> uh, 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 but yeah, anyway, this is this this was the I, I do this all in Linux. This is the Mac me uh, yeah. What this? Yeah, that's the name of the context. It is the URI, because I can show you the, this stuff here. So 
it all just goes to Apache configs. Right, so Apache v host. Should have restart. Yes. No, it's the restart. Okay, Max have a very strange thing. You have to put a dash K in the restart command. Thank you, Frank. It's very strange. Okay. So the command is uh da, 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 da. So you can see these are the, all the YAML files. It's it's trying to restart with this, which works fine. It says, yeah, it's fine. But it doesn't actually reload the config. I learned this through debugging. This is literally built-in Mac OS Apache. <laughs> so it's very obscure and weird. But if I do this dash K and then do the provision verify, and I'll do the, um, hold on, we'll do it verbose so we can see. This is a messy version. Boom. See, that wouldn't have shown, that doesn't show up unless you use the K. How confident am I? Very confident. <laughs> Overconfident. Overconfident. Anyway, right? This is very hard. This is a very hard process. But like, we just want to build Drupal sites. So if we can simplify it, we can make it easier for everybody and uh, bring more people on. Because getting on your local was really important. And I hate, you know, poor new people have spent like three, two weeks to a, three months figuring out how to run local host and stuff like that. So um, once I find my slides, I'll wrap it up. Questions? Yeah, that's, that, that's next. Like I haven't gotten there with PowerPoint X, but that's how Agar, Agar Core works now. So you add multiple servers and only the first one is the local one. The other servers are all somewhere else and they only work if there's an SSH connection, and then it pushes the configs to that server, runs restart on that server. Nice. And that's it. Back here. Oh, that's live. Um, so where is the file saved, John? Are they an Wherever, YAML file, or does it read it right from? That's YAML files. It's in a default directory, but you can change that too. So if you do, um, this is the console config file. What Any of these can be overridden if you put it in that YAML file. I don't have one right now. This is where it's actually saving the context. Um, nice. It uses, this is inspired by uh, Terminus. Terminus has a, all that has a nifty class that loads in all this config easily. It automatically loads them all in from environment variables, for example, and all these other interesting things. So um, yeah, everything's reconfigurable from these files. Is that it? Short question, probably long answer. <laughs> Are you in a virtual environment with this? No, this is running directly on Mac OS Apache. I, well, that, for this use case, I run my Linux machine, I run Docker locally. The point is, it all comes down to Apache anyway. So it's abs we're, I'm, I'm extracting it out where it doesn't, it can, we're, we can put it on all these different use cases. Because like, there's always gonna be, you're always gonna wanna run your website on different systems, people are gonna have different you know, so if we can get it as simple as possible, I even want to use, I even have run PHP run server plan, plans in there to just use PHP run server and like SQL Lite, which is just a file, mm -hmm. you know? And so if I can get that working, you will need like zero extra dependencies on a la Mac laptop because you already have PHP, CLI, and uh, as you might believe. Yeah, I think, that, I think it comes with you install the uh, 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 I found master. simple tests will break it's not uh, my PHP main. built in, but. But yeah, but yeah. You, know, you know, like you, the point is like run a website. All, all the different ways we can do it turns out are, are pretty simple because we have all these different classes. Like, uh, sorry. <clears throat> so like instead of Apache, it's just run this command. That's the whole thing. And it verifies the server, it runs, executes. I'm trying to get this to run in the background and like pull it later if it's tricky. So, I, but you know, this is kind of these are these tasks. It could be are totally arbitrary. We can add these files and just do all sorts of stuff. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> Woo!
Thank you.